What's going on people, welcome to United View and I'm here at the Amex Stadium ahead of Manchester United's trip to Brighton on Saturday night. We're gonna take a behind the scenes look. That's what you guys love doing. That's what I love doing. That's what Josh loves doing. That's what we do differently here at the United View. The stadium tours, going in the change rooms. We're gonna take a look at the home changing room. More importantly, the away dressing room. The pitch, we're gonna have a look at that pitch side and some other stuff as well. So big up to everyone here at Brighton who have allowed us in to take a look around and let's go and bring it closer to you guys. Let's go have a look, let's go have a look, let's go. So we are here at one of the hospitality suites here at the Amex Stadium, I think Mayo Wine Baxter. I think that's right, isn't it? Um, just really quickly, I mean, how much does this hold? And um, you know, what's it? What's what happens here on match day? Uh, this, this is the largest of our hospitality rooms. Holds 500 people. Big buzzy room on on match day. People come here early, have a drink, watch the early game, go outside, and then come back and after the game and. Uh, watch the game at 5.30 as well. So yeah, good atmosphere here. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully it won't be that good uh, on 5.30 on Saturday when Manchester United comes to town, or uh, well, after the game, should I say. Um, talk to me about, you said something about the design of this place and how they, how they even started creating it. Yeah, the style of this particular room was to reflect Sussex by the sea. So as you can see from the ceilings, it's, it's reflecting the waves of uh, the English, English Channel not too far down the road. Portholes, again, reflecting the sea. So yeah, it's just kind of, showing that uh, Brighton are the only team in Sussex that are in the Premiership. And they are very proud of that too. You know what, you come to stadiums or you see stadiums, you don't think what actually goes in behind the design process. You see the, the glitz, the glamour, you see the you know, 30,000 odd seats, you see the pitch, but it's these finer details that actually make a difference. And that's one thing that I hope you guys from watching this video are starting to understand about not only the people who work at Brighton Football Club, but also uh, the actual stadium itself, not just the pitch, not just out there, which, which obviously you would have seen, but this side of it as well. So let's take a look at some more stuff. So one thing that's uh, really impressive here at Brighton, obviously, is the boxes. Um, and if you take a look inside here, here's one of the boxes. Um, the company um, have had this for a while, I've been told, but just look at it. Nice, crisp, pristine, exactly what you expect, really. Um, they can fully customise and personalise their boxes, um, which I suppose you should be able to do um, at most football clubs, especially in the Premier League. Um, get their own food brought in as well, get their food brought to them. Got obviously their own um, alcohol and food uh, and, and drink, sorry. And I'm not sure if actually this is open. No, it's not, but obviously you'd, when you want to go watch the game, you go out, sit on the balcony as well, and you get a perfect view. Look at that, absolutely perfect. Mid-tier, no obstructions, absolutely perfect. So yeah, this is a, I think they've decorated this perfectly as well. This is nice. And again, this is all personal. You can do as you want um, if you want to come into the box. Yeah, don't know how much they cost though. You know, need a lot. Uh, but, yeah, exactly. Um, well, around about uh, probably, probably, 40 to 50 thousand pounds for the year so um if you all want to chip in we'll have a little whip round and we'll all get involved <laughs> okay so here at amex this is the juicy bit this is why you guys have all tuned in for this this is what we do here at the united view this is the player entrance this is where the manchester united players and the brighton players will be walking into the amex stadium they'll take a trip through there and into here as you can see big lewis dunk there passion brighton fans passion bruno, bruno passionate there he is as per usual legend of the club bruno is We've got our own Bruno, we don't need that one, that's all right. <laughs> but he's been great. Um, so we're gonna walk through to here. I think we're gonna end up at where the players, different change rooms are, etc., etc. We've got media, press conference rooms. That's where we're gonna start, in the press conference room, in here. And I'll be honest, it's a cinema. You know, a real, look at this, padded seats, embroidered seats, look at that, nice and comfy. If you take a look up here, this is where Graham Potter will be addressing the media. Ralph Radnick will be addressing the media for his second to last time. What's that penultimate? Um, and as you can see, it's very big. It, you know, how many, how many seats are in here? 50, 50 seats, so 50 members of different media outlets around the world, rights holders, accreditation holders, club media, etc., will be in here. And if we come around here, Josh, this will be the front if you just pan to here. Brighton Hove Albion in the middle, and that's where the managers do their press conferences. Screens, nice bit of tea and coffee available as well. But what I will say is that it's very spacious. Been to some media um, media rooms and very small. Definitely don't get seats like this. They've thought about absolutely everything. It's the finer details. So let's take a look at where else. 
here we are, going into the home changing room. As you can see, one thing I have noticed about being in this area where the players are is how much they remind their players of the good times. I know it might seem like a simple thing to do, but it's very, very important that you do that. Look at Sid as they're absolutely buzzing at promotion as well. So let's go through to the home changing rooms. Thank you, Al. Appreciate that. Our tour guide for today, Alan. Um, again, players galore. You can feel the energy. If you're a home player here, you're saying to yourself, this is what it means to be part of Brighton. So, as you can see here, warm-up room. Now, this is what I find amazing, right? Walking, obviously, likes to come along by themselves. You've got your 4G, 5G, 3G, whatever. AstroTurf there, ready. Exercise, bikes, little bit of a gym. Your pre-match warm-up before they even go out for that. They can do extra work on that. And you've got a lifetime supply of water and Lucozaid, which they're never going to run out of. Um, you've got your exercise um, balls as well. Um, sorry, you've got your exercise uh, stuff. You've got your medicine balls. You've got your footballs. What else you got? You've got these things I actually hate using in the gym that rub your muscles out. They hurt like hell. The best bit, like No, nah, they're awful. We've got some balls that aren't pumped up. Hopefully, they will find themselves with air before they go out. Um, cones, uh, Mike Feeling special, yeah. there you go. Phil Cones. Phil <laughs> Cones, yeah. Okay, now we're going to go into the actual dressing room. That's a little bit warm there. Again, Yves Basuma there. Tariq Lamptey there. Who else we got here? Enoch Mwepu there. You're all seeing them. Basically, you're walking into your own changing room. You're seeing yourself, you know. You're getting a reminder of how good you are. Trossard, great player. Tell you what. <laughs> Oh, Big Dan needs to come down, doesn't he? <laughs> Big Dan needs to come down. Right, here we go. This is the Brighton and Hove Albion home dressing room. As you can see, it's absolutely massive. This is where the players will be lining up. All the way around here, they've got LED lights that go around there. They've got spacious stuff in and around here, as you can see. And if I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, wow, this is, this is massive. Comfortable seats, this is what I want to see. I've got my little compartments, put my little, uh, what is it? I've got the little Louis V wash bag and all that. Put my, uh, take my Yeezys off, put them in there. All them players probably wearing Balenciagas and all them kind of things, put them in there, which is great. All the shirts will obviously be hung up by the time it comes around to uh, Saturday, 5.30. Um, and on the other side, we've got the exclusive Graham Potter tactics, yeah? These men are looking to play 55 versus 11 as you can see on the board. Let's give Graham Potter a couple of tactics. Right, where's Ronaldo? This is Ronaldo, all right? And the other players are going to be the Brighton players. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> Just all mark Ronaldo. I'm Graham Potter. This is what I want, okay? You can see where Ronaldo is. If he goes that way, you all squeeze. <laughs> you all mark him. If you're on the bench, you can come and mark him as well. That's the danger man, Ronaldo. Make sure everyone's around him. That is what Graham Potter's gonna be telling his team um, and probably something a little bit more technical once he gets to do that. But bloody hell, they've got loads of balls, different set pieces and uh, hopefully this is at Man United, you know? Because we haven't been great from set pieces or coaching or anything. Maybe we need some more boards, but this is what other teams do, loads of boards. And they've got a gigantic, gigantic screen here. Bigger than the UV pad. Um, at, uh, at back at UVHQ, um, but yeah, big massive touchscreen there, so that's what they've got there. Um, and inside here, if we go here, obviously Ronaldo settings, even though he's not in this one, but ice bath settings, players, little Brighton clock there, like that. Um, shower room, there you go, don't even want to be rude and going with my, with my shoes, but uh, I'm sure they'll wash it out before I go in. Uh, that is where you can, so I'm going to lie down and get a shower. Is that, if you're injured, you still need to wash. That's a good idea. I've never ever oh, thought about Ryan, that. Ahead of the game. <laughs> ahead of if the there's game. an injured player who needs to wash before he gets off, lie down, mate, and we'll wash her. Not a problem. <laughs> um, in here is, I believe, just regular toilets. Oh, they've got a little, uh, little Joe Malone. You know what I mean? Little Joe Malone there. Little Joe Malone number. Keep it smelling nice and stuff. I like that. Little Joe Malone number. What else have we got here? Treatment tables where the players would get their rub downs, get their massages before, um, during, and probably after the game, etc. etc. Two tables, physios will be doing what they need to be doing, TV on so they can watch the highlights of themselves, hopefully not winning by that time. Little microwave, a little, little pot noodle at half time or something, you know, warm up a little pizza. Again, more and more Lucozade tape, etc. etc. Um, and as we come out of here and go into the away one, I've got to show you this because I don't know if it's just me, but I've never seen this before. This is a boot warmer. Yeah, that's, that's what I said. It's a boot warmer. Obviously, hang your boots in there, it blows the hot air out. And I'm like, 
a boot warmer. You know, they've got, they got undersole heating, you know, the pitch is as flat as anything. The pitch is wet, it's a nice little zip. Oh, my boot's too cold. Can, you, can I just warm them up, please, before we go out? So maybe I'm old school. Maybe I'm the one who's the odd one out. I didn't even know this existed, a boot warmer. Imagine that. That's amazing. So yeah, the players can come there and get their boots warmed up um, in there as well. Okay, so out of the home changing room into where we're going to be, the away dressing room here at Brighton and Hove Albion's Amex Stadium. I'm excited to see this. Usually, what you always know is there is a, usually a massive dramatic drop off in quality from the home team's dressing room to the away team's dressing room, which what's, is standard what's procedure. What's been the worst? Well, Burnley's was, um, it was just a room, wasn't it? It was an office room, COVID but that was because of the COVID and they had the showers outside in the little cabin um, at Burnley, they did Al. So are the showers at least inside here? We, we have them inside. Okay, but that's, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's kind. Um, so let's have a look at the away dressing room. What do you think, how, do you think it's going to be good? Do you think it's going to be? What do you plain, think it's plain Jane. Plain Jane, 100%. Plain Jane. Um, again, like we always start, I think every team that comes gets reminded of, you know, where they need to be and etc, etc. That's fine, where they need to warm up. And this is the Manchester United dressing room for Saturday evening's game. Basically just playing. <laughs> Nothing in it. Um, very close together. There's enough space though. Very echoey. It's not soundproof like the other one. So when... You know what? I'm going to go on the other side of the room. Yeah. Let's yeah. have a, a Bruno Ronaldo conversation. <laughs> yeah? Okay, so you're gonna be over there. Ronaldo will be over here somewhere. Ronaldo will be sitting down in the corner, not happy with what he's seen. And he's gonna to say to his compatriot, hey, over there. Oh, wait, wait, I'll be over here. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my big sitting. <laughs> I'll be like, you're not even looking. You're not even looking. All of that, all of that. That's what's gonna be happening. Um, Wambasak will be over there, chilling, chewing gum in the corner. Um, and the rest of the guys will be in it. But in all seriousness, um, it's big, it's spacious, but again, it's, it's what happens, isn't it? That, you know, even if you're playing amateur football at Sunday league level, you go to an away dressing room, mate, you're getting, you're getting the, um, the other side of the coin, which is, which is okay, but why are they going to make it comfortable for you? You know, that's the whole point of home advantage, right? Um, as we go into here, these are Manchester United showers. Just plain, looks like your leisure centre stuff. Over here, got a little bit of tea and coffee, you know. Yeah. I think Ronaldo will be on the black coffee, you know, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Or PG tips, little stirrer. Yeah, leave it out for him. Leave that out for Alanga, my boy, you know. Here you go, Anto. You know, I'll leave you a little stirrer. There you go, mate. Um, inside here, toilets. Let's go in there. And obviously, tables here as well, where you can get your treatments. Away change oh, room. Most important. Ice cream. Ice cream is in there. Yeah. And that's what's wrong at Man United. The diet's all wrong. Yeah. We're only joking. There's not in there. It's, just, it's water. It's water in there. Oh, is it open? Can I open it? Oh, I need to my fingers. It's just water. See, there you go. Oh, it's freezing, man. Oh, bloody hell. There's a train going on there. Um, yeah, so there you go. Nice water in there. It says no exit for players that way, so they obviously can't go out that way. Um, no boot warmer in here. You've got to go out with cold boots. You do cold not get <laughs> cold feet. Wait, Again, wait. it adds to the home advantage. Do you think Ronaldo has a portable boot warmer that he brings to him to every game? It's not portable. It's built into the boots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Jürgen Fleck, uh, good win the other day against Brentford. Um, what are you saying coming did you in? Post, did you see my social media post? Did you see my post afterwards? What, what, what did you post? That? Sorry, I don't, I don't have social media. I'm too busy working at Sky slash BT slash wherever this is. Okay, um, no, I just made it about me, just putting up pictures of myself. Oh, that's great. Also, I've just realised I work for the United View since yeah. the microphone says United <laughs> View on it. So, uh, yeah, totally, yeah. Oh, yeah, so, uh, oh, I'm just going to go on my phone now, have a quick look. Some nice pictures there. Yeah. Do you think you can bring that same picture performance into this game? To be honest, not really bothered. Um, two games left. What we, what we playing for? I, I don't know about other guys, but I... I clocked out about Christmas, so not really bothered me. Seems about right. Uh, about the evaluation everyone's giving. Um, already made plans for next Christmas? Yeah, uh, obviously World Cup will be in November, so I'll get some nice sun there. I won't get selective in national duty, so I'll be off. Um, might not come back. Um, and if it goes uh, the first four or five games, if we don't win them or do well, I might just clock off. Done it this season, Sounds like a plan, man. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. yeah so if you know, if, if, if you're done here, I've, I've got stuff to do. To be honest, don't really want to have to do this. Don't really want to be here. Well, as usual, great to speak to your flack. Be on your way. <laughs> so this is an interesting piece of um, just around the corner from the players' tunnel, and I think it's actually really fitting. So they've got a, a shirt of every game they played in their first season, Brighton Hove Albion, 
against every opponent that they had home and away. Obviously, Liverpool there, they took a 4-0 loss there, but it's Liverpool. Manchester City took a 3-1 loss there, but it's Man City. Manchester United, oh, they beat us. Yeah, they, <laughs> absolutely typical. Yeah, um, I remember that game as well. So they beat Manchester United. Um, and they've got every single team. And the reason why they did it is because they said, well, we don't know how long we're going to be in the Premier League for. Let's enjoy it and let's get memories. But actually, when you flip that, they should have more belief because, uh, you know, never in their wildest dream would they have, would have thought going into their sixth year in the Prem, I believe, you know, playing against all these teams, you know, um, and getting great results as well, you know. Look, they beat Arsenal 2-1. Aubameyang wasn't happy. Yeah, good. Um, look at that. Um, beat Swansea there as well. Who's that? Stoke. Oh, let's go through it. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, can we get that? Thank oh, you. Use the force. Use the force. I it and it carries on. It carries on. Honestly, look. Got West Ham behind there. You got Southampton, Chelsea. Okay, they took a bit of a loss there, but um, who else have we got? Bournemouth, who have just been back promoted back. Newcastle, Chelsea again. Watford. Uh, who's that? Burnley, Spurs. And it's a great thing to to do because actually what it does is it gives them that. Now they can, I think they look at it and say we absolutely deserve to be here. Look, we narrowly beat them there in 2017 at Old Trafford. Martial. Don't think we're ever going to see him again. Um, Swansea again, but what it does, I think it just, it shows you where the club was at, at thinking when they got into the Premier League. And you know what? Yes, we're at, uh, going through a period of transition and, and stuff like that, but it's so important to take time out to think how other clubs' journeys are and what is paramount to them so you don't lose yourself and don't lose your values. And Brighton are just so happy to have even made it this far when the club literally nearly went extinct. The club literally nearly went out of business. I and mean, not till you see things like this, you're like, Do you know what? You need to count our lucky stars that, you know, we're a team that, yes, we're not where we want to be right now, but we've got a great infrastructure in terms of staying in the Premier League, high turnover of players. And you look at other teams around, that isn't always the case, even though I'm not saying we haven't been poor and it's horrendous. It is. But um, when you look at other fans' experiences, you have to take that into consideration. Um, Chrissy Hewton, Chrissy Hewton done a you know, fantastic job here at Brighton. Um, before he handed over the reins. But these are some of the players that they came up with in that season. You know, Duffy, Rossinha, Liam does a lot on TV now as well. Solly March, he's still here. Sidwell came up with them. Joa, Pascal Gross, Knockhart was doing bits here. Lewis Dunk, still here, strong. Um, Dale Stevens, remember him? Sam Bulldog. So yeah, the players have signed their the shirts home and away for that first season that they came up as well. So good luck to him. And you know what? Six straight seasons here in the Premier League. That's pretty good going. OK, so that's what the players will see. They will walk through here, which is the tunnel bit, which again, even calling this a tunnel is a, it's not a tunnel. It's a, it's a big, massive, fantastic space, really. It's not small and tight. And the players will walk out here to the Amex Stadium, 30,666 th seats. The crowd will be roaring. The away end will be over to my right. And there'll be Brighton fans all over and they will come out here um, to an array of noise here at the Amex. And I have to say, it's an absolutely beautiful stadium. We've seen how many stadiums we've covered here on United View and obviously me and Joss personally with our whole journey in YouTube. We've been to some great stadiums and this ranks very, very highly. New stadium, obviously purpose built for football. It's got this really surreal kind of thing. Look, and look, it's very fitting. I don't know if you can catch that, but seagulls just landing just on top of the stadium. Very fitting for where we are. Um, it has this kind of perception about it. it's got this depth of perception where it feels really big but also it feels quite compact at the same time pitch is absolutely unreal we saw some of the groundsmen out earlier on uh, putting the lines on look at that flat as anything absolutely perfect and the stuff that goes in behind the scenes here at the Amex is absolutely unbelievable with the sort of stuff they have to do to keep the pitch and maintain it to this level let's take a, a trip over to Al um, is this the home bench this is the home bench right Okay, so this is where Graham Prater and his cronies will be. Uh, yeah, the Brighton Hove Albion lot will be over here and Man U will yes. be in the away end. So, um, but yeah, good view for the managers to see, the, to see uh, what's going on. And uh, you said it's uh, 30,666 30, seats, right? And that's capacity. That's capacity. So yeah, we, we've made it bigger as uh, the years have gone on. We put an extra tier on a few years ago. Um, yeah, full attendance every match, pretty much. So, uh, yeah. How, 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 how heartwarming is this for you as a, as a Brighton fan? And, you know, we spoke about a bit off camera about Brighton's journey. And for you guys watching home, Brighton have had an incredible journey. 
and you can enlighten us a bit more about it in terms of nearly going out of business to now having a stadium, you know, sponsored by American Express, purpose built, amazing facilities and, and a team that's playing really well. Well, yeah, you, you've, said, you've said it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty old. So I've seen <laughs> us uh, when we've been at the Goldstone ground. I grew up with that, loved the stadium, but it was an old rickety stadium by the time we almost went out of business 25 years ago. We had no ground in the in the town. We had to travel 80 miles to Gillingham for two years. And then we ended up in a a running track stadium. And stadium's a bit of a strong word. 6,000 people it yes. held. So uh, we were there for 10 years. And um, yeah, I, I enjoy every time we, we come to a home game at this stadium and, and still love the fact that, that it's ours. Yeah. What does it mean to the people of Brighton, do you think, to have a team also that is, you know, competitive in this league, causes a lot of problems to, to any side and what Graham Potter's doing. How, how, how do the Brighton fans see that? What do you think it means to the people of Brighton to have, to be, have, have such a team they're proud of? Yeah, it, mean, it means an awful lot. It, um, to get to the Premiership was such a big challenge. We didn't know how long we were going to stay there. Uh, this is our fifth year. We're going to go into the sixth and more besides. So, yeah, it, it's just brilliant. Yeah, we're just looking forward to to seeing good football and who knows next year maybe Europe you know what why not why not you know you look at what West Ham have done you know pushing you look at Wolves trying to push into that and I don't yeah. see why Brighton can't do that and I look at what Graham Potter's done here with some of the players coming through and and even when you lose some of your best players and you know who knows who might leave this yeah, summer but absolutely. I just think there's such a great basis here and people like yourselves are doing great work behind the scenes and people who have been really good to us here um, at Brighton and Hove Albion just it just sums up what a great club this is, to be honest, and it seems like a real family club. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a very, very well-run club. We can, everyone can see that. And as I say, from the experiences yeah, we had yeah. years ago when it was, wasn't a, a well-run club, we're, we're very proud of what we've achieved and still achieving. Mm. So, yeah, long may it continue. So we're walking along the touchline here at the Amex pitch side. This is the dugout, or the, the, the away technical area where Ralph Ranick will be. Don't think he's going to be barking much orders to be fair on match day because I think he's had enough. <laughs> they don't listen anyway. Telling them what to do, where to be, how to play. Um, and we just freestyle it anyway. So I don't think that will happen. But just looking at it, I know I said it earlier, but the pitch is just, it's so crisp. You know when it's just so crisp, you're like, how can your touch be bad on this? Like you see players like miscontrolling we'll the ball. Find out on Saturday. Well, I know exactly. We're going to see, you know, hopefully not Rafael Varane making any mistakes, you know. But it's true. And look, they're all they're all used to it. All the pitches in the Premier League, you know, are of this standard. Even the Championship, I get that. But when you see it up person, especially if you know, that's the whole point of us bringing this to you guys from around the world is that you get to see just how good the facilities are that our players, and not just our players, all professional players, what they get. Do you know what I mean? What they get. So as we're walking over, we're going to take a trip towards the away and this is where the Manchester United fans will be situated behind the goal here at Amex singing David De Gea's name of course um, I'd say that's probably about a couple of thousand away fans two three thousand maybe I would say yep and this is where you can see the whole of the pitch this is obviously at pitch level going back the other way Josh if you could just pan out it's massive it's a massive pitch um, and it just you don't really get a perception of how big it is until you come this low down um, it's absolutely massive and on TV sometimes it's a little bit smaller and stuff like that but from this angle at pitch level you get a real perception as to how wide it is and how long it is obviously here's the goal hopefully Ronaldo's going to be bagging a couple into let me just put my good luck on it Ronaldo that's for you you will be scoring I promise you that famous last words when Trossard scores a hat-trick <laughs> you just know, isn't it? It's going to cut to that and we lose 3-0 Trossard hat-trick. Um, but yeah, this is the Amex. I mean, up there as well in the top corner. We're not going to go up there, but if you can just see there, that's where the TV um, studios will be. So I think this game's on Sky Sports. So Gary Neville or Jamie Carragher or Redknapp, Keane, whoever's, whoever's covering the game, they'll be up there. And right up there, again, I don't know what kind of zoom you got on that thing or whatever, but right up none there, none at all, there you go. But right up there um, is the TV gantry. Um, this way it says American Express and it comes down to where it says um, I talk. Um, that's probably where the commentators will sit as well. But a fantastic stadium, a fantastic club. Everyone here has been absolutely fantastic. As far as I'm, I'm really, really excited to keep doing stuff like this. 
um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I know you guys enjoy it, and that's what we do differently here at United View. We like to be out here in the field bringing you this A1 content. But hey, there you go, Yamex. Yeah,